Good morning. So yesterday I received an email from Elena asking for some help with her Google Bitmoji classroom. So I want to share it with you only because I think this is a great way to show how to do remote learning, how to do hybrid learning, how to make connections, how to keep things personal. Um, it made me smile and I hope that it makes you smile and that it's helpful to you as well. So sit tight. Hi Susie, um, it's Elena and Chris and I had a question about our online um, slideshow for our Bitmoji classroom that we're trying to create and um, you might cover this in one of your sessions um, coming up so if you do just be like Elena shut up I have enough to do I'm going to cover that later um, but it's just a quick question so we made this kind of starter um, slide and then we connected each grade level up here to a different slideshow so if i press um present right here it's gonna load cool then um i can click on let's say like third grade but when i click on that it kind of closes the presentation and then reopens a new one um to their page where the grade level would have their page for the week or for whatever. Um, and then they have to press present again in order to click on whatever um, day it is for where their lessons are gonna be. And um, I was wondering, I haven't connected any of these yet to links for whatever day they're gonna be using, but um, is there a way where if I connect a separate slideshow instead of just a regular link like if i want to link a slideshow to a slideshow is there a way to just do it without having to have them do that extra step where they have to press present again twice um so it would come up like if they clicked on third grade it comes up to this and then they have to press this again and then m most likely we're going to have more slideshows in monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday with a bunch of links on there um, I'm just wondering if there's a faster way that I could connect each of the slides to each of the grades to each of the days <laughs> so that it's not like they have to open, you know, five or six slideshows up here. I'm just thinking that that might be a lot for them to navigate. Um, and I was just wondering if there's a different way or a faster way to do that or to link the slideshows together. Um, and if you're going to cover that again. Elena, shut up. I'm going to cover that later. Um, and I know you're probably super overwhelmed. So um, thanks for all you do. And um, that's all I got for today. Okay. Let's see if I remember how to shut this off. <laughs> I never remember. All right. So I'm going to show you how to go about doing that. Or this is one way. I'm sure there are others. But I already have asked Elena for permission to record this and permission to access their music classroom. So I'm going to go to the general music slideshow that they've started with and we want to be able to link this one to third grade just as an example. But the first thing that I want to do in order to have this not have to click present is I'm going to first publish this as a web page and a lot of people look at me like I'm a little crazy like I don't even know what that means you kind of really don't have to know what it means it just means that your slideshow is going to be embedded in the web and it's going to be a lot easier for your students and your families to interact with it so that's what I'm going to do first so I'm going to go up here to where it says file and I'm going to click on publish to the web now the idea of these publish to the web is really for slideshows to play automatically but we're not using these as slideshows it's not like we've thrown up pictures of our dogs and we want them to show every three seconds so you kind of have to play with the settings a little bit to make it work so I'm not going to allow this actually only has one slide but I'm going to change it from every three seconds to every minute because chances are nobody's going to stay on this page for longer than a minute on this particular page, it doesn't matter because there's no other slide to advance, but you'll see how that works down the road. So I always change it to one minute, and I'm not worried about starting it as soon as the player loads, and I'm not worried about restarting the slideshow after the last slide. I'm going to go ahead and hit publish, and 
it is going to, hello, <laughs> it's not going to click. Ah, after all that, nothing's clicking. Am I on the on Chrome? Aren't you happy when technology glitches happen to Susie? Here, let me see if I can. No, it's frozen. It's frozen! All right, I'm going to hit pause and then I'll do part two. <laughs> so some things I learned the hard way. After three tries, I realized that a, um, a button came up underneath my own picture and I couldn't see it. So you come down here and you click publish. And then it asks up here behind my picture, are you sure you want to publish it? Yes, I'm sure. So I click OK. So now it gives me a link. I'm going to copy this link, Control C. And then just to show you how it behaves differently, I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to paste it in here. Control V for vomit. And then hit enter and it will pull this up as a web page. You're going to see, you can't see any of the Google slide you know, frame around it. You do have your controls when you float your mouse down here, but it's much more clean and it's behaving more like a web page. So that's what we're going to start with. This would be the link that you could share with your students. So when they arrive, this is what they see. So they'd be able to come up here and click on third grade. Except for right now when we click on third grade, it's going to bring us to the Google Slideshow which we then have to interact with or put it into presentation mode. So let me close that and I'll leave this here for now. Now I'm going to go back to the third grade one. So this is the third grade page. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to publish it as a web page. So I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to publish to the web. I'm going to have it go every minute and then I'm going to hit publish. And the dialog box is going to come up here. Oops, did I just lose it? Yes, I did. There we go. Click OK. And I'm going to grab this link. And I'm going to copy it. Now, I'm going to go back to Elena's original one. Let me close that. This is the original slideshow. And I remember when it came up before, the third was a little bit squished. So I'm going to open it up just a bit so it has a little more space. I'm going to highlight that text and instead of having this link go to the slideshow, I'm going to break that link and I'm going to do it again. Oops. Highlight the text and then I'm going to click the link up here and I'm going to insert the published as a link link. There we go. So now it has the new link which doesn't look any different. But if we go back here to, where did I put it? This is it. So I'm gonna reload the page just in case it wasn't fixed live. So yay, we fixed the third, it's not squishy anymore. And then if I click on it, it brings me to an equally beautiful published as a web page link. So it makes it a lot easier for students to navigate through. Last thought, if you are creating something that has multiple slides, like my professional development one, or um, I believe this one is the one that I played with yesterday, this one. So one last thing, the whole reason why I have it set to one minute, I can show you here. I'm in my blended learning schedule with all of the different slides. So if I go here to file, and then I go to publish to the web, and I change it from every three seconds to every minute. And then I, I believe I've already published it once so I don't have to do it again. And I grab this link, copy and I vomit. And I put it in here. It's going to bring me to the first page. Now the slide is not going to auto advance for a whole minute. So I have time if I want to. I can click on a link within my slides and it will bring me to that page. I can hit my back button. I can click on a different link. I can hit my back button. It behaves a lot like a regular web page. So by putting the timings to one minute, you have a little bit more leeway to be able to allow people to navigate through your site. 
So I know that the um, video is a little bit choppy, but you get the idea. If you have any questions about how to publish your slides as a web page or how to put the links in the right place, then definitely reach out to me. Thank you, Elena, for letting me use your video question in this tutorial. And I think that it's a great way for a teacher to be able to interact with a student. So thanks for watching.